Here's what's coming up on your horizon. Well, there's been no shortage this presidential election cycle of talk about character. Today, we explore that word that cuts to the essence of each of us. We begin an Oklahoma City company that's developed a character index that can give you some personal insight with a few simple questions. We will meet two young ladies whose character is evident by their ability to look past their own success and to the struggles of others. We catch up with the winners of this year's first robotics competition to see how character traits like hard work and persistence has helped them win it all. And we end our day in a Western Oklahoma community where inclusiveness is something to celebrate. Stay with us for Oklahoma Horizon. Oklahoma Horizon is made possible by CareerTech, a job for every Oklahoman and a workforce for every company. With additional support from the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food and Forestry. Thanks for joining us here on Horizon. I'm Rob McClendon. So how do you define character? And what makes up that definition? Traits like honesty, loyalty, and forgiveness easily come to mind. But what about qualities such as attentiveness, thoroughness, and even resilience? Where do they fit in? Today, we're going to focus on the role character plays in our lives, both at home and work and across generations. And we begin with one of the very hardest places to look, and that's within ourselves. It's an often debated question in management circles. Do you hire for attitude and train for skills or hire the most skilled and adjust the workplace to fit their attitude? Anyone can fake an attitude, right? You're gonna have a hard time faking character. Meet Jason Jones, a workplace psychologist who along with researcher Virginia Smith designed the Character Strengths Index or CSI. No one knows us like ourselves and the assessment gives us a chance to take a snapshot of how we're feeling, how we view ourselves. And to thine own self be true, at least most of the time. Most of us are about 50 percent uh, in terms of accuracy in self-awareness. There's some data to support that. We're, we're about half good and half bad at being able to look at ourselves and say, oh, these are my strengths, these are my weaknesses, this is what I need to work on, this is what I'm good at. And that's why Jones and Smith created the Character Strengths Index. We develop over time and that's what that's the beauty of character development is it can be a conscious process. I can recognize when things don't aren't going the way I expect them to go and I can kind of feel myself beginning to become tense or maybe I'm being short with the people around me. And if I know that's a tendency of mine, then I can proactively decide I'm going to change my behavior. And when you change your behavior, you find yourself becoming more like what you intentionally want to become. Is it easier to grow your strengths or improve on your weaknesses? So what we say about your strengths is uh, leverage those, put those into practice as much as you can. There's solid research behind people who uh, each day when they are doing things that allow them to practice their character strengths, they are uh, more engaged in work, they're more passionate about what they do, and they have higher levels of productivity and, and, and performance on the job. Uh, solid research behind that. Now the other side, let's look at that, and that is what about those things that could be your weaknesses or those opportunities? When you have an area that, that's weaker, it's something that could be derailing your, uh, your relationships, it could be hindering your relationships, it could be hindering your work performance. Um, it also could be hindering you from reaching your goals and you don't really realize that yet. So look at those things and say, hey, is there something in here that I can focus on a little bit more? And when you can do that, this is where we often see um, significant, um, a significant boost in performance. And then also people who are saying uh, an employee or a leader has made a significant improvement in how they relate to other people because they focused on one or two character qualities over the last month or so. So I put the Character Strengths Index to the test. I believe that I am where I am today because of the help and assistance I have received from others. That is absolutely true. 
an online assessment that asks you how closely 95 different statements describes you. I'm always on time to meetings and appointments. Boy, that is somewhat unlike me. Something Most easily answered, while when some do make you ponder. I plan out what needs to get done at the beginning of my day. I plan it, don't usually do it. Altogether, it took only about 20 minutes, and I was able to get the results hot off the printer. Right, Rob, these are your results here. On page three, it's gonna give you your, your top rated character qualities. And then you're at the bottom of the page, you're gonna see you're gonna have your lowest rated character qualities. Mm. This is a, a, a snapshot of what's your top and what are your bottom character qualities. You're a long time educator, spent you know, m most of your career talking about giving people skills. Mm -hmm. But how important are these soft skills that we're talking about? They're extremely important. I guess the best way I like to explain it is if I was going to have heart surgery, I would want to have a surgeon who was highly competent. I would want him to know what he was doing or she was doing. But at the same time, I would want them to have great character. I'd want them to be thorough. I don't want them leaving anything inside of me that doesn't belong. I want them to be careful. I want them to be creative. I want them to be flexible. What if something goes wrong during the surgery and they have to change what they'd expected to do? I want them to have the character to be able to do that. A fact not lost on Edmund Dennis Brent Cutlassa. When you're working internally, if there's any conflicts or anything that arise between us, the patients can see it. The patients can sense it too. So Cutlassa had his entire staff take the character index. Some of the things that I really enjoy doing, I scored high on, and some of the things that I know have kind of set me back at work sometimes, I scored low on. And so it was interesting to see that on paper and realize that there's a name to it and realize that, um, that it's not necessarily a weakness, but something that I have an opportunity to work on. And while the character index can be helpful across an organization, its real strength may be in helping guide those who guide others. You know, sometimes we tend to hire people that are very similar to us. Mm -hmm. Should we be looking broader than that? You know? It can be very difficult when you're in a seat of power in an organization to get a good feel for what people really believe and what they think. Because what they want to do is they want to please you. They obviously respect you. You're in a position of authority. And so they want to give you the answers that they think that, that you would like to hear. Many workplaces are so focused on the bottom line, right? They're so focused on the, the metric of, of the performance or the output and don't give, they don't give the focus for what goes behind that. If you're going to have the efficiency or the quality that you want to have, you got to have some character behind that. You got to have a person who says, "You know what? I'm not going to cut corners. Uh, you know, I could do this faster, but I'm going to take a little extra time to ensure that this is exactly the way the customer wants it." That's the character side. What you see is most people in uh, in a company, uh, whether it's you know HR or a supervisor who's hiring for a position, they are hiring and they have this mindset of competence. What's a person's background, experience, education, skills, right? But what we see is the majority of people are fired, they're let go, or they're poor performers based on character. Things like a lack of thoroughness, a lack of punctuality, not showing up for work on time, a lack of cooperation, not getting along with people, a lack of attentiveness, and allowing things to fall to the wayside or getting injured or other people getting injured. So those are character qualities that actually hinder people's performance, their work, and the culture. And you see more of that, and that needs to be developed and focused on even more so than the skill side. Which makes a lot of sense, because even the best business culture does not work without the personal values to support it. Now, if you'd like to take the Character Strengths Index, it's not very expensive and it is a good insight into growing our strengths and improving our weaknesses. And we have a link to the CSI website at okhorizon.com. But when we return, a snapshot of true character. You're watching Oklahoma Horizon with Rob McClendon. Weekly insight into your changing world. Well, we live in the age of the narcissistic selfie, an inward focus that is all
all too common and all too often off-putting. Consider this. In 1950, 12% of high school students told the Gallup organization they considered themselves very important. Now fast forward 50 plus years, and that same figure now stands at 80%, which makes the sisters in our next story all the more special. Joining me now is our Courtney May. Cancer bites, but HOSA bites back. This is the slogan for a fundraising campaign that's raising money for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. And two sisters involved in Oklahoma's HOSA, also known as Future Health Professionals, started it all. AXA and Santina Cherian are not your typical HOSA members. They have both served as state officers for the organization and are leaving a legacy that is saving lives. We knew we wanted to do something out of the ordinary to raise money for the Leukemia Lymphoma Society. And the Lemon Challenge came up and um, we knew that it could be a huge success. And so we, we had nothing to lose and we started it. It really just grew out of the classroom. The sisters are a part of the Biosciences and Medicine Academy at Francis Tuttle Technology Center. This academy is designed to prepare students who are interested in the medical field for college. I fell in love with science and with the health field by coming here and having that one-on-one -on -one time with my teachers and understanding what science was really about and how relevant it is to um, life and how, how, how many people you can help through the health field. For me, going into the health field was because of my childhood. I've been very blessed with a healthy childhood and with parents who knew what they were doing as nurse practitioners. And so for me, wanting to go into the health field would be a way of giving back to the community because then I would be able to um, bless others the way that I've been blessed through my childhood and give them the medication or the help that they need through the health field. It was that same call to service that led them to create the Lemon Challenge, a fundraising effort that has raised more than $25,000 in Oklahoma alone for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. How to take the challenge is really simple. All you need is just a lemon, and if you want, you can post it onto your social media so you can videotape it. And you just say, Cancer Bites, but Hosa Bites Back. And I'm Governor Mary Fallon. Cancer Bites, but Hosa Bites Back. Governor Mary Fallon took the Lemon Challenge and thousands of others across the state. This isn't just our story, it's not. Um, for everyone who is in this academy, um, or just in any career tech that I've come across, they've been so blessed by the experience and so um, encouraged by the experience. And so we are just one of thousands of stories. Lovely. The Lemon Challenge has grown beyond Oklahoma, and now HOSA organizations all across the country are taking on the challenge. The impact is nationwide, all thanks to the Cherry and Sisters. Thank you, Courtney. You're welcome, Rob. Now, if you'd like to see more familiar faces take the Lemon Challenge, just head over to OKHorizon.com and look under our value added section. Still to come on Oklahoma Horizon, a community of character. But first, lessons in leadership. Well, since 2007, the first regional robotics competition is held annually in Oklahoma City at the Cox Convention Center. FIRST, which stands for for the inspiration and recognition of science and technology, was founded by the inventor of the Segway, Dean Kamen. And his goal, to inspire a new generation into the fields of science and technology by pairing professionals and young people together to solve an engineering design problem. But what these students learn is often much, much more. Here's our Blaine Singletary. The heat is on at the first robotics competition. Teams of young engineers from around the region have come to put their mechanical creations to the test. They work year-round basically putting together a robot to compete uh, at the uh, regional and the national and the world level. That's Marty Lewis, superintendent of Gordon Cooper Technology Center in Shawnee, where the Sprockets Team 2341 is based. The Sprockets uh, is an accumulation of uh, many students that come to Gordon Cooper Technology Center from a variety of school districts that we serve. They uh, work very hard, uh, just a super group of young people. 
While the personnel has changed over time, this supergroup has competed and grown over the past couple of decades on a variety of playing fields. The theme changes every year, and that's something that Captain Kai Collins says shapes their entire project. Okay, so this year's game was called First Stronghold. It had a medieval theme. The objective was to go over different obstacles. They swap in and out, so you never know what you're going to go up against. The students only have six weeks to design and build their robot after the season's theme is announced. We had the brainstorming night, so we decided what we wanted to do, what we wanted it to do. So we built it to its specifications. We tested it on the field elements, slowly learned what we can and can't do, what we need to improve on, what we can change to get a certain mechanism down. But this short season of building and competition is just one sliver of what the sprockets do all year long. Senior Michaela Fess tells us her time with this team has been just as beneficial for her as it has been for the community. Sprockets has been just a way to reach out to the community and help others and have fun at the same time, driving robots, building, learning how to use tools and learn how to use computer programs, LabVIEW, CAD. It's all these things in one. It's not just robotics. When we caught up with the Sprockets, they were at the state capitol being recognized by the legislature for their accolades on and off the playing field after winning the first Robotics Chairman's Award in competition. Instructor Christy Strickland told us what the Chairman's Award is all about. It's really based on our overall package, our community service, our first outreach, our um, STEM outreach, our safety outreach, and also outreach to our alumni and impact on our kids. So we're a, really a year-round program. Sophomore Daniel Albrecht is in charge of a lot of these public outreach programs, including ones that teach the community about safety, something else this team takes very seriously. Safety around the robot is very important, but safety in everything you do is also very important. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. So imagine the feeling when the Sprockets were sitting in the stands, fresh from the fight, and listening as the awards were given out. About five or six awards out, I went out in the hall and was uh, pacing. We were holding hands, all of our team, we were linked hand in hand. Whenever we're announcing the awards, they kind of give a hint. Such as how Sprockets, they uh, mesh together to form the best team possible. They actually mentioned how we would play rock, paper, scissors uh, to choose who took who home. The judges didn't have to play rock, paper, scissors to pick this year's Chairman's Award winner. And our hearts just sunk because we didn't know what that meant. No one really realized that. We're like, who, what team can that really be referencing? So about halfway through the speech, I'm like, well, we did good, we didn't win. And then they started saying a few things that kind of sounded like us. From mentoring FLL to outreach that touches children in hospitals. They started talking about our Lego drives and it, we just got, that's us. Please join me congratulating Team 23. Our entire team pretty much just jumped up at the same time. I woke over, see our instructor jumping up and down. My students tell me when I came screaming through the door that uh, they thought I was going to have a heart attack. Oh my word, it was the best feeling ever. I just, I'll always hold that as a special part of my memory. Winning the Chairman's Award automatically qualified them for the World Championships months later in St. Louis. But beyond all of that, the experiences these young people had are ones they will take with them as they continue to hone their skills and more importantly, use them for the good of all. Again, Marty Lewis. It's always refreshing. It's always uh, reminds us why we do what we do when we have young people that do great things. They really make a difference in the community and this is just a way of exemplifying what the great things are that they do. Horizon is at your fingertips. Join us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube to catch the segments you may have missed and our latest new content as it happens. And finally, we end our day in western Oklahoma where Austin Moore introduces us to a man of character who is reshaping his community. It is a stretch to say there are 25 residents in Crawford, Oklahoma. 
Still, it was no surprise when several times that number gathered in the community, celebrating the 40th birthday of Eric Kugel, nicknamed the Mayor of Crawford. Eric is a very social person. He loves to be around kids. He loves to be around other people. Nyla Kugel is Eric's mother and caregiver. He never waits for someone to, to speak to him first. He's always the first one there and to, to, to tell them hi and, and give them a big old smile. That smile is famous in these parts. It is more genuine than most and belies levels of fortitude and resolve that is apparent to anyone who knows him. Eric has cerebral palsy with both um, athetoid and spastic characteristics. Uh, one is too much movement and one is kind of a stiff uh, characteristic. This leaves Eric's body in perpetual motion, but forces him to fight for control. It affects his mobility and his language skills, but not his mind and certainly not his attitude. I've had a lot of mentors, a lot of people who's affected my life, but Eric, Eric Kugel has changed my life for the better. Rick Garrison was superintendent of Cheyenne Public Schools and Nyla's boss when she lost their daytime caregiver. Rather than giving up a valuable employee, he suggested she bring Eric to work and see how it went. I call him the assistant superintendent now. I mean, he kind of takes care of of uh, a lot of things that you don't think he really does take care of. Uh, he's a hall monitor. He, he, he goes outside and takes care of the grounds. And so, you know, being in the condition he does, he brings a lot of value to our school. And he's really been an unexpected blessing. And that is the point. By including Eric in the daily life of the school, it is the school that was changed. What Eric has gained doesn't measure up in any magnitude to what he's given to our school and community. He sees himself in the John Wayne movie, True Grit, where uh, John Wayne's sitting high on the horse and he puts the reins in his mouth and he draws out his six shooters and he stares down the four bad guys. And, and uh, that's really how Eric Kugel sees himself. Uh, he's larger than life and a guy that uh, he can't talk very well. Uh, his body has denied him in several ways, but yet he sits high on that horse and, man, he takes on the bad guys every day. He's on the lookout every day when my kiddos leave for lunch, making sure they're not doing what they're not supposed to be doing and hot riding in the parking lot. Well, he'll be the first one to come tell me on them when they do that. Cheyenne High School principal, Whitney Moore. He cares and he gets really upset when he thinks someone is not doing what is right. Um, and it just really, it, it gets to him, it really bothers him. Some people can look the other way and think, that's not my problem, that's not my business, but Eric wants to be involved because he cares. Still the biggest impact Eric has on this school is from being there every day, a fixture in these children's lives. He's put a positive attitude throughout the school. And when you see Eric, you just always get in a better mood. He makes you happy because he always says hi to you. Makes your day better. Joshua Montgomery grew up next door to Eric. Wow. To me, Eric's just another person. Wow. Yeah, he has that, but to me, it's just nothing that's really holding him back. I still think he's just a normal person, just out there having fun. I just see him as a good friend, like I see all my other friends. There's one little boy in particular um, that was scared to death of Eric. I mean, if Eric was anywhere close, yeah. he just, he was so scared. And now he comes by every day after school, wanting to know where Eric is and how's Eric and what's he doing. They see the challenges he faces every day um, and they interact with him and they don't, you know, some kids don't ever interact. Um, with people that face challenges and don't know how to interact with them, and our kids do. Eric Kugel spreads joy as he rides high down these hallways. In doing so, he banishes stereotypes, fear, and anxiety. I think what Eric has taught our kids um, is important. The kids seeing Eric in his chair every day, I mean, he. He has good attendance. He gets up every morning. He, 
He goes with me every day. He may not want to be there, but he makes the most of it. That workman's attitude, brandished with a smile, left a mark on Cheyenne's most famous graduate, world champion bull rider, Sage Kimsey. Oh, it, yeah, it changes everything whenever you see Eric smile. It's, a, it's pretty special getting to run into him, for sure. That feeling brought Sage home for Eric's 40th birthday party, where thanks to fellow bull rider Jay Morrow and an organization called Western Wishes, Sage carried a special gift. And this right here, Eric, is your invitation to the National Finals Rodeo. <laughs> Eric's been so good to us and, uh, you know, he's helped us out for so long that, you know, I really felt that if we could do something like this for him, that it would just, it, it'd be amazing. It, it, it warms your heart, you know, mm -hmm. to think that um, what he does makes a difference in somebody else's life, you know. Eric Kugel, a humble cowboy riding high in the saddle. Want to see more stories like this? All our segments are streaming on our YouTube channel at Oklahoma Horizon TV. Next time on Oklahoma Horizon, we examine the economic impact of Oklahoma's Native American roots. What we have learned in management, technology, et cetera, is transferable to a lot of other businesses. So it's really opened up a lot of opportunities because of the expertise that we have. The benefits of being a native state, an Oklahoma show for the heartland, Oklahoma Horizon. Well, that is going to wrap us up for today, but you can see more of any of our stories on our website at okhorizon.com. Follow us throughout the week on Twitter at OKHorizonTV, or like us on Facebook where we do post weekly stories. Thanks for including us in your day. I'm Rob McClendon. Hope to see you back here next week. Oklahoma Horizon is made possible by the Oklahoma Department of Career and Technology Education. With additional support from the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food and Forestry.